Well, when her parents also died and she was going through the house, she found this box of old pictures. And her grandpa had been a farmer. And in one of the pictures, she could see him milking cows. But unfortunately, you could only see him from the knee down as he was sitting on a stool behind the cow doing the milking. She took that picture, mailed it into Kodak with a note that said, this is the only picture I have of my grandfather. Could you please remove the cow so I can see what he looks like? <laughs> Wouldn't that be great if we could do that? If we could look at some of those things that we don't understand in life and say, you know, could we just remove that misunderstanding so I can figure it out? Or are those times when we want to kind of know how something's going to turn out? If we could just peel back a little bit of the future just to see how it's all going to turn out. Well, I think of that story sometimes in that not understanding when we come to this Feast of Pentecost or when we speak about the Holy Spirit. I can understand God the Creator, God the Father. Even as a little kid, I thought it you know, was the older gentleman with the long beard. We have images of Jesus Christ, but our images of the Holy Spirit are a little more abstract. We have the breath, the wind, the flames of fire, the dove, and so it can be a little difficult for us to feel like we understand what that gift of the Holy Spirit means for us. Father Richard Rohr has a couple of kind of significant to me anyway comments on the Holy Spirit where he says first of all for us in faith mystery does not mean we don't understand. Mystery means that our understanding is always unfolding as we're discovering more and more about how God is working in our lives, as we look more and more at the gifts of the Holy Spirit, as we witness baptisms and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit into a child's life, that we come to a better understanding each time of what that mystery means. He also talks about the Trinity and says, God the Creator, God the Father, is God who is on our side. He is for us. God the Son, as in Jesus Christ, is God who walks alongside of us. And God, the Holy Spirit, is the God who dwells within us. That passion that we feel for doing what is right, that sense of urgency that we have for justice, for calling us to prayer. That is what came down on the disciples at that first Pentecost, or the first celebration of Pentecost, and that's also what comes down on us at our baptism, at confirmation, throughout our lives. Our reading from Acts begins, it says, when the time of Pentecost was fulfilled. But it doesn't mean that it was over. It was over and done with. It means it was finally here. And think of the enthusiasm you feel when things are finally here. Whether it be the day of your wedding, graduation, baptism, the children coming home, something that we've looked forward to for a long time. We feel that excitement. And that's what the people in the first reading were feeling, that sense of excitement of saying, this Feast of Pentecost is finally here. It has pulled us all into Jerusalem. And so it's just a natural setting for something powerful to happen, for a strong revelation of God's presence. And God does not disappoint. There's a strong driving wind that fills the house where the disciples are. In fact, it is such a strong wind that it makes such a commotion that all of the other people in the city come over to see what in the world is going on. And the Holy Spirit descends upon them and divides up and so that there's a tongue, a flame of fire above each one of their heads. Can you imagine the enthusiasm that you would feel in being a part of that? The wonder and the awe. And the townspeople or the people who have come there are astonished partly because all of a sudden the disciples are speaking in their own native language. And they're amazed. They say, how can we understand them? We're from all over the place. And yet they're speaking in a language we can understand. And they're not only speaking in a language we understand, but they're speaking of the mighty acts of God. And friends, that's a language each one of us understands, the mighty acts of God the way God has been working throughout time from the beginning of creation, the ways that God is still working in our lives, the ways that God is pouring out that Holy Spirit within us. For Paul reminds us that each of us has that same spirit. We might have different gifts. We might feel the presence of that spirit you know, a little stronger one time or the other. 
but yet that spirit is there in its fullness for each one of us. We are only called to be astonished ourselves, to feel the fullness of that presence, to have that enthusiasm, to feel that passion, to feel that flame alive within us that calls us to a greater love of God and a greater love for our brothers and sisters. And so friends, as we listen to these readings, as we sing these Pentecostal songs, as we see these flames of fire around us, let us ask God to help us feel more strongly the fullness of that Holy Spirit within us and to live our lives in such ways that we proclaim by our own lives those mighty acts of God.